My first Grand Canyon trip that I went on, I was seven. I had my eighth birthday in Grand Canyon, and we were all floating beside the boat when the guide was up making sandwiches or something. And he gave my grandpa a sandwich, and I was like, Grandpa, I want to do that. And he was like, what, make sandwiches? And I was like, no, I want to be in charge of a boat. We were in this beautiful place called Redwall Cavern, and all of a sudden we saw these weird little boats coming downstream, and we all kind of just stopped. And I remember thinking to myself, like, all right, if I'm in Grand Canyon, I need to learn about these boats. There's a lot of things different about a dory. Well, they're drop-dead gorgeous, for one. They're really fun to row once you get over the terror. My first thought was, those cannot run this white water. They know you're really up in the odds of something going wrong. You can't hit rocks. You just can't hit them. And there's a lot of rocks on that river. Brad, um, I feel like Brad shares the information with those who need it. And I think I was one of those people who needed it. Brad gave me this huge responsibility and kind of walked away. And I'm really glad I did. She's excellent in the shop and really, really into the history and the heritage and the stories. Learning their history and their lineage is it blew my mind what these stories have accomplished and what they've seen and what they've saved, really. Stories are named after places that have been destroyed or completely impacted by man. The Diablo Canyon, uh, the Music Temple, the Hetch Hetchy, Malibu Canyon, the Emerald Mile, the Chattahoochee, Peace River, Having the Dories be named after that kind of sheds light on what there is still out there. I don't know, maybe it, it, it sparks activism or it sparks emotion in you and it makes you want to fight for these places and kind of think in the back of your head, what's out there? What, what matters to me? What don't I want my boat named? If you never saw this place, you wouldn't know what you lost. Getting people down here and showing them what is there is protecting it. What you're facing and what you're going through on a day-to-day -day basis is, is nothing on the grand scale of things. And I think down here, it really humbles you. It, it grounds you, even. So many of us get stuck in our little world, and this is it. This is all we see. We only see the walls and what's directly ahead of us. But down here, your eyes can wander, and you'll always find more. And I feel like that is what Grand Canyon kind of taught me. Like, no matter what is directly in front of you, there's always more.